Hello gainers, Ralphie here on location, a beautiful summer's day and just to let you know I have been investing in opportunity. Let me tell you more, this vlog, part of the Fitter Philosophy channel here on YouTube, is having its first effective mini-series at the moment entitled Investment because from the moment we are born there is a certain amount investment of investment in us as individuals wherever we may be and whatever our circumstances. It's certainly true to say that some people get a lot more invested in them than others. However, it's also true to say that the results of that investment can vary. Someone may not have received that much investment uh, and I'm talking about the care of parents and uh, the community around them being clothed, fed, educated, somewhere to have shelter and a few toys. Uh, but some people can make an awful lot with the relatively limited opportunities that they have initially whilst others can be heavily invested in and make very little of that investment and generally, generally can end up leading quite unproductive, uneventful, uninteresting lives. And uh, I'm going to basically, in this vlog, talk about understanding investment in opportunity. Opportunity is something which as I've mentioned just there, that a certain amount is given to us, but it is usually nothing compared to the opportunities that we take for ourselves that impact our lives. And it works both ways. Some people take the opportunity to get into drugs, uh, theft, and they tailspin their lives, basically down the spout, their investment and their opportunities are negative and result in negative benefits. In other words, failures. But the, for those who keep it positive, it's a different situation. The investment in opportunity is seeing the better side of a situation, understanding how to take advantage of it and manipulate it. Now, I'm not talking about aggressively or not, not necessarily about money, but for example, if you happen to be out in the countryside, it is an opportunity and an investment to get to know that countryside, enjoy the fresh air understand the flora, the fauna, the animals, the birds, and, and get to know it, because in doing so, we all get to know a little bit more about the world around us and the sheer complexity of it, and the rules by which it exists. But sometimes opportunities can be quite small. They can be slight opportunities, an unexpected friendship, which can germinate into something much more substantial. And when we look at opportunities, we should never just be focusing in the context at that moment in time when an opportunity occurs. We should be as much as possible, as much as we can, looking at the consequence of these opportunities, the development of, the opportuni of these opportunities, and what can be achieved potentially by following them. For example, someone could get a job as a student in a bar and they may say to themselves, I'm serving drinks, I'm talking to people, people when they're sober and people when they're drunk and I'm getting to know some of the regulars and there is so much useful information to be learned from people when they are no longer sober because frankly, in my experience, I find them to be much more revealing of themselves and also more honest. People, when they are not sober, will give more away than they care to. They quickly drop the facade, and we all have our facade, our front that we present to the world. But when people are inebriated, when they're drunk, intoxicated, that facade can very quickly drop and it's a, an art form, a skill, an opportunity to be gained from conversing with these people and no one can do it more successfully 
than a bar person because a bar person is in that perfect opportunity, if they're not too busy, to ask the questions and make the observations, it is in fact an opportunity. And there are other opportunities, someone can be, some young person can be at a car boot sale for example and see a small stamp collection or a coin collection and it flickers a flame of interest and in the youthfulness and naivety they see the opportunity but never underestimate a naive and instinctive decision by a young person because they tend to follow their instincts far more successfully than adults do and they may see the opportunity to have that collection and to add to it slowly over the years and over the years when they add to it they meet people, learn stuff, discover history, history that's not in the history books, they discover the provenance, the real purpose of coinage and money or the, the real messaging that can be going on in stamps. Uh, there are many things to collect out there, personally I've collected whiskey over the years and uh, I've avoided bank investments, investments in banks, and I certainly wouldn't invest in stocks and shares because they are willfully manipulated. Anything that is not within your control is a weaker investment because quite simply, when it's in other people's control, in other people's control, it is their investment, not yours. So I was buying whiskey, and I didn't think too much about it at the time, but latterly, some of the whiskey that I bought has become valuable as a collector's item and for example I've bought a bottle of Bonahab and Old Acquaintance single malt cost me £120 for a bottle 14 years ago and I sold it last year for £1,500 that's just one example in fact of the thousand odd bottles that I've sold from my collection the last five years only three have made a loss only three but importantly having sold them and got the money for that what do I do? Leave it in a bank? I don't think so. Because I have experience in understanding the investment and opportunities. So I have bought some other items that are related to whiskey, a few casks of whiskey and other related items. I won't bore you with the details. And uh, it's sure that th there is certainly some profit, financial profit to be made, but when it comes to money, to have enough is to have an, a lot. And people who are very spendthrift and easily led by the allure of the luxury lifestyle and luxury goods will find a certain poverty in that environment. And uh, this is when we invest in ourselves. We invest in our own skills, experience, instincts, hunches, strengths, know our strengths, because by knowing our strengths we recognise our weaknesses and ultimately as we go through life making our investments not just in earning money, that's only part of it, but in investing in everything, good company, collections, a comfortable property to live in, good friendships, quality food. My goodness, there's a classic example. To use knowledge and experience to take the opportunity to understand how much chemical there is in heavily processed food and how it contributes to heart disease, diabetes and the foreshortening of our lives and the ill health that we can experience in older, older age. When we understand that, we then understand the real value and the opportunity of investing in good food, raw food, macro food, fresh vegetables, fruit, uh, butter, oil, olive oil, old-fashioned food that people used to eat before the age in which diabetes, obesity and heart disease and cancer was just was quite as powerful as it is now. That is when Investment in one thing will lead on to investment in others because we're simply getting experience, personal experience in investing. And that's where I'd like to leave this series. Thank you for watching. It's 
an opportunity for me to communicate with you. So I'm investing in these videos, I'm investing in communicating with you. And that is very satisfying for me. But I'll tell you one reason. Not only does it help you with a perspective and a, an opinion and experience of someone else's life, it helps me because it makes me talk aloud about what I'm thinking and it helps to articulate my thoughts, marshal my thoughts and organise my thoughts. And in fact, I then, as a consequence, think more methodically and more clearly and more articulately about what I'm thinking. It's a win-win situation. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this series. I will be back again in a week's time and I'll be talking about three books I highly recommend you read. In the meantime, I shall leave you on a summer's day with a glorious coastal view down a pebble beach somewhere in the middle of the Irish Sea. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.